Okay, so I figured I'd add on to the video so I can show you all what I'm doing. Um, Got to make a fixture. I just uh, took the skill saw, that guy there, with a 30, 35, or 40 tooth carbide blade. Just a carbide tip DeWalt blade. It's just a $15 blade. And uh, this is my plate that I picked up from the scrapyard. It's an inch and a half thick. Piece of 60, 61. Killer stuff. And dirt cheap, so. Um, cut out a block. It's roughly, uh, I guess, uh, eight inches, eight and a half inches by three and a quarter or so. Um, about the same size as the one I did for the War Horse. Uh, I'm going to do it a little differently, and sadly it's it's hard to make a jig uh, right now for the manual machine, knowing that I'm going to be making these jigs again for the CNC when it comes in, but I need to do it because I can't just sit around waiting for the CNC to get here. It'll be a couple of weeks and I need to get things done. Um, so basically what I'm going to do, square this block up. Um, I'm not going to face any of these sides. They're pretty flat. This stuff is uh, actually was made for like, I don't know, a laboratory or something or aircraft facility because it's even stamped with aircraft grade and it's got all the numbers on it. Plus it had grain direction identification on it and the surface finish. It's a little rough right now just because it's been banging around in the shop, but it's nice and flat. This thing, that entire block was probably, I don't know, 24 by 24 and I mic'd it out and it was less than a thou difference all the way around the entire block. So it's a pretty nice block for a buck fifty a pound. Um, so I don't bother facing these sides. I'm just going to square it up on the sides. Actually just top and bottom. These sides don't matter. Um, square it up here and then for the most part I'm not doing a lot of framework on the A10s, A15s and Kawakens. So I honestly probably won't even do anything for the top. I'll just square it off and then um, set up a bolt pattern here with a, a little line. Basically that'll allow me to zero the blade. Excuse me. There you go. Now you can actually see it. Um, but differently, I'll have to do it a little different from this one because um, these ones have a flipper obviously. The war horses didn't. Um, so it will... On the war horses I did it just a bolt hole and then I lined it up flat with the top of this. Um, kind of didn't like that because it was a little harder to get it perfect every time. So I'm going to put a little lip, but then I'm just going to knock part of that lip off here to account for the flipper. And the A10 and the A15, they have the same pattern, so it should work for both. I'll just have to do different bolt holes for the fixture points. Uh, so yeah, I'll do that and I'll bring you back up in just a second. Okay, so quick simple update. Um, just ran through, scored this block up, just the top and the bottom. The rest of it doesn't matter. Um, got a kind of a crappy finish. You can't really feel it, but it looks crappy. Um, since I'm getting this CNC mill, I decided to put this lovely beast in CNC mode and uh, run through it this old Crusader 2 controller and it's got optical encoders. Um, someone smashed into it with like a forklift or something before I got the machine. So it has a point where it's coming along real smooth and then it goes and it jumps. So it leaves a crappy finish. That's why I don't use this thing as CNC mode. Uh, manual mode, I'm pretty sure that this thing wants to have my children. It loves me. But CNC mode, I'm pretty sure that it would want to eat any children that it produced with me because it hates me and it wants me to die so that is why a CNC mill is coming in but it works wonderfully in manual mode so either eventually I will tear this thing apart and replace the all the drivers back there and the encoders and run Mach 3 on it or I'll just convert it back to a manual machine since I'll have a CNC machine so yeah that thing's it's good old machine but it doesn't quite do exactly what I need it to do in CNC mode so uh, okay, so now I'm just going to machine out the top so we can fit these blades, drill some holes, tap them, and we'll get back to it. Alright, so about halfway through I changed my mind and decided to do the fixture a little bit differently. Uh, so, A10, or excuse me, A10, A15. Uh, six bolt holes, 
and basically you just pop it onto that one and then it lines up to that one flip it over lines up to that one lines up to that one a10 same way uses the same hole as the a15 just lines up to the next hole flip it over bam now we are set up to run the bevels and you've seen on my previous videos how I do that um, I'll just set that in there put the blade vertically come over to the side here and tilt the head of the mill a few degrees and mill off a bulk of the material then send them out for heat treat and when they get back I'll grind the tip into them grind the milling marks out of them and it just saves me a lot of belts and hassle um, I'll pretty much be doing the same thing with uh, um, the new machine when I get the new CNC machine in uh, the new Tormac um, but what I'm going to be doing is I'll do some I'll actually be machining I'll build a fixture that's flat it'll hold down the blades and I'll machine uh, similar to the way John Grimsmo does it and Eric um, I'll 3d machine all the way even to the tip but I'll leave it rough machine send it to heat treat when I get them back I'll grind them out on the belt sander um, just saves a lot of time it's still going to get hand ground, so you don't have to worry about that. These are all still going to be full customs, even with a CNC machine. It just allows me to keep more stuff in-house and lets me get them done a little faster, so you guys don't have to wait a year for parts. And uh, that way, I don't have to uh, worry about trying to uh, send these parts out and uh, do a production run. Um, I haven't really been approached by any uh, major companies other than uh, like DPX gear. For doing a folder or any work with them um, we're still kind of back and forth with that stuff who knows what will ever happen to that um, but what I'm thinking is probably eventually start going almost the full production uh, do a cheaper or excuse me a less expensive version of uh, maybe an a10 um, putting that maybe into production with a little bit less expensive parts so that I can offer them out to y'all a little cheaper maybe three three hundred fifty dollar range and put out a few hundred of them a year and basically what I do is uh, just go a little bit thinner material which will cost a little less um, with the titanium and the steel um, and then maybe do a G10 side um, I'm also tossing around and I don't know what everybody thinks of it um, let me know in the comments um, thinking about tossing around uh, doing one the non lock side frame in like 6061 t6 aluminum and then sending it out and having it uh, class 3 hard anodized um, it would look cool and it'd be a little bit cheaper uh, than full titanium uh, and just do a titanium lock side I've also considered doing a um, a10 as a liner lock and do the frame is all aluminum both sides have it class 3 hard anodized but doing a titanium inlay uh, for the lock bar or maybe a, a nice stainless one so it'll last a little longer than titanium um, and then I'd be able to offer that sort of thing a little cheaper and especially with the Tormac mill coming in I'll be able to run these a little more production so if I do a run like that I would try to minimize the amount of hands-on time so it'd be more of a product like a semi custom production I guess mid tech run kind of like the way Les George does with the VSEP and stuff so I'll keep you guys updated um, so for right now I'm gonna get this fixture all cleaned up and it's ready for blades I UPS man and just dropped off a tracking wheel and a couple of idlers for me so that I can convert my belt sander over to a or excuse me my service grinder over into a belt sander service grinder so I've got to take off this guard mount up a bar up here that way I can run the belt all the way across so you'll see that here shortly all right guys uh I'll come back with some more stuff here in a little bit. Okay, so just came to mind I should probably uh, videotape some of this so you guys could all uh, see what's going on. Uh, still working on the A10s, A15s. It's the next day from uh, yesterday, obviously. Um, right now I've got my fixture up in the mill and I am roughing out the bevels. So they start like this, full thickness. I think it's like 220 thousandths, 230 thousandths, something like that. Um, and then right now I'm doing the one side, so this would be the lock side, I guess. Um, and I just machine out the 
most of the bevel, take it down to where there's about, uh, I don't know, I guess about 10 thousandths to the center line so I can uh, finish it off on the belt sander or once I get them back from heat treat. I'll just leave them like this. I'll just cut this tab off the tip and grind the tip into it before I shoot it off to heat treat. Um, then when they get back, I will surface grind them and finish the bevels on seatbelt sander. So I'm finishing the A10s, A15s, Quakens for some strange reason. I don't know why I didn't design them in my cat files with a tab. So I'm going to hand grind these guys. Um, shouldn't be too big a deal. They're pretty small. So uh, do those and we'll get on with the video. All right, guys.